Right, let's find out. And they are Bob Kelly, Villanova, Pennsylvania. Karen Levitt, Sudbury, Massachusetts. Lisa Feldmeyer, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Vince Carlson, Rochester, Minnesota. Ken Peterson, Los Gatos, California. Vicki Watson, Woodland, California. Lori Brown, York, Pennsylvania. Gracie Buss, Ontario, California. Tom O'Brien, Chicago, Illinois. Dave Quackenbush, Syracuse, New York. Now we have nine more contestants, rare to go here. So here's the next fastest finger question. Put these North American rivers in geographic order from the northernmost to the southernmost. Rio Grande, Platte, Yukon, St. Lawrence. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order. Starting in the north, and it was, you still is, the Yukon, then St. Lawrence, and the Platte, finally the Rio Grande. That's the right order. Who did it in the fastest time? And the winner is Tom O'Brien. Hey, Tommy Boy. Ready to go? We're going to come back and play with Tom in just a moment. Tom O'Brien, Chicago, Illinois, in the hot seat right now. We get an awful lot of folks from uh, Chicago. You know that? That works for me. Yeah, where do you live? Uh, right downtown Chicago. Downtown actually. Chicago. Isn't that a right beautiful off place? Right the loop. Great yeah, place. Yeah, it's just so clean and nice. All right, so Tom, what do you do for a living? I'm a public relations manager for an advertising agency in Chicago. One of those public relations guys with all the answers, huh? Oh, sometimes. Uh -huh. We make them up if we don't know oh, them. Absolutely, sure. And uh, you're here with uh, your pal, uh, Michael. Nice to see you, Michael. Michael has been friends since what? College? Uh, for yeah, long decades. time, huh? And you also room together in Chicago, right? And it works out well. Exactly. It's I almost do... like the odd couple. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. I do the cooking. He does the cleaning. Wasn't it's... that the odd couple? Uh, I guess it was. Sure, absolutely. Lemon liked to uh, cook, and uh, who was the other guy? For two thousand dollars, Rage, come up with it right now. Walter Matthau. Yes, Walter Matthau did the cooking. All right, fine. So, here we go, Tom. You know the game, right? Right. You know the rules. You right. know the lifelines. 50-50. Ask the audience. Phone a friend. It's all here. So, if you're ready, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? For $100, if you're skeptical about something, you should take it with a grain of what? Sand? Sugar? Salt? MSG? That would be C, salt. Final? Final. Salt, the right answer for $100. Here we go for $200. According to a story often told to young children, what bird delivers babies? Eagle? Stork? Ostrich? San Diego chicken? That would be B, stork. Final? Final. Stork, the right answer for $200. 300. The curved tube breathing device used by surface swimmers is called what? Snorkel, flipper, fin, sea straw. That would be a snorkel. Final answer? Final. Yes, it's a snorkel for $300. $500. What does the boxing acronym KO stand for? Kick out, key opponent, keel over, knockout. D, knockout. Final answer? Final. Yes, KO means knockout. $1,000. If it's 12 noon in New York City, what time is it in Salt Lake City, Utah? 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 a.m. B, 10 a.m. Final answer? Final. Got it right for $1,000. OK, 
Hey, Tom, off to a good start here. All of your lifelines still there. We're looking at the $2,000 question, and here it is. What is the name of the guitar part that connects the head of the guitar to its body? Peg, bridge, fret, neck. D, neck. Sure? Final. You said it. You said it right. $2,000. Here it comes, $4,000. Which of the following types of furniture is also the name of a historical empire? Ottoman, Futon, Credenza, Amboise. A, Ottoman. Final answer? Final. The old Ottoman Empire, the right one for 4000 <laughs> We're going to break. When we come back, he's going for $8,000 on all of his lifelines. Where the game began. Right. Have you ever seen the British version? I haven't. I haven't been over there since it started. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch. Chris Tarrant does a great job. All right, Tom, so uh, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Uh, you, uh, you actually collect uh, board games, don't you? I do, yeah. I, I collect odd board games like foreign language versions of Monopoly and things okay. like that. Okay, really? Mm -hmm. All over the house? Well, they're more over the house than they should be, yeah. That's right, and Mike is nodding his head saying, mm -hmm. yeah, i got to clean them up all the time. Right. All right, fine, so you're doing well here. You're going for $8,000. You're eight away from a million. All of your lifelines are with you. Let's play. Here we go. $8,000, take a look. On what part of the body would you traditionally wear an epaulette? The head, wrist, shoulder, foot. Shoulder, C. Final? Final. That's where you wear it, on the shoulder. He's going for $16,000 right now. Talk show host Sally Jesse Raphael is known for wearing what color glasses? White, gold, red, green. C, red. Final? Final. That's what Sally wears, those red glasses. <laughs> this guy, six away from a million, hasn't touched a lifeline. 32,000. What instrument is musician Yo-Yo Ma famous for playing? Cello? Piano? Flute, guitar. You know, this looks like a very intelligent and well-bred audience. I think I'd like to <laughs> pull them. Kissing up to the audience is an old trick around here. All right, Tom, let's hope it works. Audience, we need your help. What instrument is musician Yo-Yo Ma famous for playing? Cello, piano, flute, or guitar? Okay, audience, if you are ready, on your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Well, there you go, 66%. That's what I thought. I'll take their advice and go with A, cello. And make it your final answer? That's the final. And it's the right answer for $32,000. came through nicely. Thank you. And you still have two lifelines. And now we're five away from one million dollars. And here it comes for 64,000. Who is currently the youngest U.S. Supreme Court Justice? Stephen Breyer, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, David Souter, Clarence Thomas. I think I would like to phone a friend. What do you want to call? Dave. Dave is? Dave is a lawyer. A lawyer. All right, fine. Well, let's see if Dave can help us out. at and we need lawyer Dave. Hello, Dave. Hello? 
Hello, Dave. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin calling from ABC's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. How are you? I'm great. Very good. I've got uh, Tom O'Brien here. Uh-oh. Yeah? You know what this call means? I do. He needs your help. Uh-oh. He's in trouble. No. <laughs> no, he thinks you got this one on the bag. All right, he's going for 64000 He's already won 32000 So, come on, I'll give you the question, the four answers, one of them the right answer. All right, Dave? Good. Okay, Tom, it's all yours. 30 seconds. Who is currently the youngest U.S. Supreme Court Justice? Stephen Breyer, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, David Souter, Clarence Thomas. I would go with Clarence Thomas. How sure are you on that, Dave? I'm pretty sure. How sure is pretty sure? Is that over 50%? Yes. Okay. Yep, I would go. Okay. Okay, I'm trusting you on this one, buddy. Good luck. All right, thank you. Bye. Don't like the way he said, good luck. I don't either. But, you know, at this point, um, I don't really have anything to lose. So That's I'm going right. to say D, Clarence Thomas. Okay, you're going to say D, Clarence Thomas. Clarence going to be your final answer? Final. Dave got it right for 64000 All right, we keep going now. You're four away from one million, Tom, going for 125,000. Of the following mammals, which can hear the highest sound frequencies? Dogs, bats, cats, humans. Well, I'm reasonably sure it's not humans. And my cats at home never hear me half the time anyway. So I think I'm going to rule out cats. Uh, I know dogs can hear high frequencies, but actually, I'm going to say B, bats. Really? This sounds like a guess. This is a total guess. Well, look, you're going for $125,000. Let me just remind you, you still have the 50-50, and you can narrow it down and make uh, your guess a little more reasonable, maybe. Would you like to do that? You don't have to. I'm just talking to myself, you know. Uh, no, because if I use a 50-50, it's going to get on to dogs and bats anyway, so <laughs> let's just go with it. You don't know. You really do You're don't right. Know. You're right, I don't. But let's just, let's go with it. Hey, you're the boss, and you really are. And the answer is? B, bats. And that's your final he got it for 125 pounds. Good goal. We'll be right back. He's going for 250,000 when we come back. Things are getting exciting now. Yeah, Tom O'Brien's up to, uh, well, he's going for $250,000, and he still has a lifeline left. How are you holding up, Mike? Okay? Great. Yeah? You feel he's going to go all the way? No doubt. All right, boy. Good. So what will you do with the money if you win? Well, I think probably the first thing is go visit those friends in London who told me to get on here. There you but go. Take the Concorde this time. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. It's a great flight. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, that's the main thing. Maybe, since I cook so much, just redo everything in the kitchen, go crazy with appliances. Take good care of yourself, yeah. sure. All right, good. How do you feel, okay? I'm doing okay. Yeah, you're doing fine. But, but in this case, if you miss the next question, you'll lose $93,000. Still up the 50-50, thanks to your smarts. We're going for 250000 That's a quarter million dollars. Let's play. The Gadsden Purchase of 1853 included land that became part of which two U.S. states? Washington and Oregon, North Dakota and Montana, Utah and Nevada, Arizona and New Mexico. D, Arizona and New Mexico. Boy, that was quick. You know this one. I'm reasonably sure. No, oh, okay, you sound pretty good to me. Final answer? Final. Yes, Arizona has an excellent 
Thomas a PR man, and I said, you know, another PR guy who knows all the answers, and, and maybe you do. We're going to find out soon. You're just two more questions away from $1 million. Got to tell you, should you miss, you lose $218,000. Thank you. I know hey, you had to remind me no, of no, that. No, no, I got to remind you. But here you are, a half million dollars, O'Brien. Here we go. Half million dollars, check it out. Completed in 1995. What European landmark did the artist Cristo wrap in fabric? Big Ben. The Louvre. The Reichstag. La Scala. I think I'd like to use my 50-50 here, Regis. Good idea. Computer, take away two of the wrong answers, please. Leaving Tom one wrong answer and the correct one. I'm going to say C, the Reichstag. Do you know this for sure? No. OK, we're risking 218,000. You must have an inkling, a feeling. A feeling. Let's hope it's the right feeling. Could I make it your final answer? Final. Yes, for a half million dollars! Just when we needed a big winner, and you oh. came across well. But that, that sound means we're out of time for tonight. Yes, I know. How do you think he feels about it? But he will be back here on Sunday night, and joining him will be 10 new contestants who have flown in from all over the country. And they are... Anna Cinquamani. Alan Harris. Bob Howe. And who wants to be a millionaire? I'd like to use my phone, friend. D-Title-9. We'll go with Picasso. No, it was Norman Rockwell. I'll take their advice and go with A, cello. And it's the right answer for $32,000. I would go with Clarence Thomas. Dave got it right for $64,000. Got it for $125,000. Yes, Arizona and New Mexico. Let's just go with it. Yes, for a half million dollars. Now, join us from New York for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Thank you very much. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Sunday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Now, this studio is just buzzing. I mean, it's red hot. The other night, Tom O'Brien from Chicago, Illinois, cruised through his stack of questions, just a little help from his friends, and now, for the first time ever, we are starting a show with someone going for the $1 million question right off the bat. We're very excited. We just can't wait to get started. This is what we live for, the $1 million question and, hopefully, the $1 million answer. So, Tom, how has it been for you for the last few days? It's been a little nerve-wracking, a little crazy, yeah. but okay. Slept okay last night? Uh, barely. Any last-minute cramming with the encyclopedias? No, I figure if I don't know it now, it's not going to make its way into my head okay. at All right, this fine. moment. And the last time you were here, you had um, uh, your pal Michael from uh, Chicago, and now we're joined by another friend, Bob, from New York uh, City. How you doing, guys? Good to have you here, cheering uh, your man on. So, you know a little bit about uh, Tom. He is a public relations man for an advertising agency. One of those PR guys who knows all the answers and looks like this guy actually does. But what would happen now to you and your job if, uh, if you did win this million? Ooh, they're probably watching. So I can say that I would be right back to work. There you go. Day. Okay. <laughs> well, that's terrific. How does it feel? Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I sure. It's, it's... I get excited when I have to ask the question. So. I can imagine the excitement on the other side of these computers. Well, all right, let me tell you what you've done now. You've won $500,000. You're one question away from winning one million. You have no lifelines left. You use them all. They're all gone. But to play along with Tom, log on to theabc.com, click on the Enhanced TV logo, and play against everybody at home, especially for this question, using ABC's Enhanced TV. 
All right, Tom. I'm ready here. Are you ready there? We're ready. Audience, you ready where you are? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Billionaire. If you miss, you'll lose $468,000. If you win, a million bucks. Here it comes. Before the American colonies switched to the Gregorian calendar, on what date did their new year start? March 25th, July 1st, September 25th, December 1st. I have to tell you, at this point, anything would be a guess. And I do not want to go down in history as the first person to miss the one million. You mean you I, don't know your Gregorian calendar? Not enough that I want to risk a million on it, and I'm going to stop. Yeah. Well, it is a tough question, isn't it? It is. So you're going to walk? I'm going to walk. That's your final decision. That is my final decision. But just for the heck of it. Just for the heck no. of it. Yeah, why don't we no, see? Don't do why that. don't we see if you could have won the million, Tom? Just think about it for a minute. March 25th, July 1st. The old Gregorian calendar. September 25th, December 1st. When did you think the new year would start for them? As I said, it would be a total guess, and it would be A. A. And you're absolutely right. March 25th. Remember that if you ever get into another situation like this and they drag out the old Gregorian calendar question, it's March 25th. Hey, you want $500,000. And here it is. Let me explain this. Prior to uh, 1753, the American colonies operated on the Julian calendar, and the New Year started on March 25th. That's what it was. Well, what a great contestant Tom was. A uh, half million dollars, uh, good for him. I imagine we'll be seeing more of him next time we play our Champions episodes. All right, but right now, 10 new contestants.